Good morning. Hope you all are having a very nice day. Uh, anyways, uh, continuing from where we left in the class. Uh, anyways, uh, very uh, firstly, thanks very much for attending the guest lecture with Mr. Craig Bell, a great tech guy, uh, like very passionate about what he does. And again, it was great uh, hearing so many good examples uh, based on whatever work experience he had over his uh, long lasting career in tech industry. And yeah, those were like very interesting. And that's one reason, you know, I, I let uh, him continue. Uh, well, yeah, initially he was only supposed to be there from 7.30 to 8. But since the interactions were going really well and his examples were like very uh, like helpful for you all as well. So I just let him continue. So yeah, thanks. Thanks for uh, yeah, so, so nice session. And so yeah, asking so good questions with uh, to him. So anyways, uh, starting where we left. Uh, yeah, this is the slide where we uh, stopped. So yeah, we were looking at uh, the dimensions of service quality and uh, on, on a high level. We checked uh, all the aspects related to the quality. Now, uh, the remaining part of this lecture, we, uh, we still need to continue with our quality management system. So initially, yeah, we learned about quality, where it came from, what it is exactly, uh, what are the key aspects of the uh, quality uh, of products or product, yeah, or goods and services and uh, services as well. So the next important part is quality management system. Yeah, so initially quality, then how do you manage and what are the key systems of the quality? Uh, on a high level, we'll be learning about it, followed by uh, one of a very prestigious competition uh, related to quality, uh, yeah, as, as yeah, based on, uh, yeah, held by the government of United States. And again, it's a, it's a one of the biggest honor, quality honor. Uh, given by the president of the uh, United States. So we'll be learning a bit about it. And again, that's what uh, we heard uh, Steve Jobs saying as well in, in, in that short video that we uh, uh, saw in the class. And uh, towards then we'll be learning, again, I'll be giving a very high level uh, information about the total quality management, also referred as TQM, PDSA uh, concept, CI, which is continue, uh, continuous improvement. And lastly, I'll be talking about Six Sigma. And the good thing is, uh, yeah, like uh, for the PDSA continuous improvement as well as Six Sigma, I'll be continuing uh, uh, in, in our next lecture, which is, uh, yeah, the quality control uh, topic. So yeah, we'll be learning more about it. So getting started where we left, yeah. So uh, yeah, after, you know, this slide, we were supposed to have our second uh, group discussion. And here are three very interesting videos. And again, these are very, very, very too much uh, they look to the exact point. So I'll run these videos and uh, yeah, after that, I request uh, you all to write a short description, maybe a two, two yeah, maybe yeah, I think maximum two, two to three sentences of each of these and email me uh, your answers uh, to get uh, the grade, the remaining 10 points. So here are the three videos I'll be playing. And, uh, and on top of it, I again like request you guys uh, given, uh, yeah, like uh, sometime over the weekend or throughout the remaining week. Uh, yeah, please watch the remit the, these extra videos as well. These are very informative and it will help you guys uh, uh, understand the concept even uh, much better. So yeah, playing the very first videos. Oops. Here you go. Everything we do to make sure we produce. Everything we do to make sure we produce and deliver our company's products and services to spec and at the appropriate cost. Quality management also includes making sure goods arrive on time. It ensures that a company's goods or services are consistent. Quality management focuses both on product and service quality and on the means to achieve it. It has four main components. One, quality planning. Two, quality control. Three, quality assurance. And four, quality improvement. Let's assume that the fictitious company ACME Byros makes ballpoint pens. It produces blue, black, and red pens. To make sure that the pens have the right color and that the color is consistent, it created a team of quality control inspectors. The inspectors take random samples of pens and examine them for color consistency. They also check that the products work properly, don't leak, and that their covers fit correctly. If the inspectors detect an inconsistency or mistake, that is, a variance, they have the authority to halt production. If they have to, they can stop the production line until the problem is corrected. ACME may also have quality management personnel 
making sure that customers get their orders on time. ACME's quality management personnel monitor stock levels, delivery vehicles, drivers. Thinking about going solar, but not Yeah, perfect. So that was another very good video explaining what quality management is. And uh, the best part I like about this video was they clearly mentioned these are the four main functions of quality management. The very first being quality planning. Second one is quality control. Third one is quality assurance. And uh, the last one is quality improvement. So yeah, these are the four main components, four main functions of the whole quality uh, management department. And uh, who knows, as you grow into your uh, role, you might be a quality manager. Even if you are not a quality manager, these are very essential concepts to uh, know. As a operations manager or even a, a step above, uh, yeah, you could be finance manager, you could be a chief finance manager, chief of operations manager, chief uh, technology manager, or even CEO. These are the key things you must know. So yeah, I think uh, that part was very well described in this video over here. And again, a very good fictitious example, a company example was used and uh, briefly the narrator uh, explained uh, what each of those functions are. So I think, yeah, that's, that's the best part I liked about this uh, short video, one and a half minute short video. Moving forward, the next one is a quality management system. And again, this is another very important concept to learn. And on a high level, I'm sure you guys have already heard it. Uh, I will say knowingly, unknowingly, but uh, knowing this systematically is very important. And while, uh, you know, while like, in this video, uh, yeah, the narrator will be introducing you with uh, the concept. But as you grow uh, in your position, I think, yeah, uh, get some more information, read some more literature, uh, maybe watch some uh, more videos or training videos, training literature, and uh, yeah, get, get uh, very well used to this because this is another very important aspect of uh, management. Management system. A quality management system. What is it and why have one? First of all, what is a quality management system or QMS? A quality management system is a structured collection of policies, procedures, processes, and their associated responsibilities. These policies, procedures, and processes are integrated so that working harmoniously as a single system, they make it easier for the staff and personnel of a business or service organization to achieve its quality vision, mission, goals, and objectives. Of course, these policies and procedures need to be documented, but that does not have to consist of paper documents unless that is the organization's preference. More likely, they will be stored and maintained in an electronic format on the organization intranet or cloud storage and might just consist of HTML web pages. So what are the advantages of having a quality management system? Why would an organization want a QMS? I like to summarize the benefits under three headings, simplify, clarify, and control. Firstly, simplify. Do you have site visits from prospective customers? Having a QMS enables sales site visits to be a structured and constructive conversation where prospects actually expect you to show restraint, the restraint required for obtaining comprehensive voice of customer, finding out exactly what is required instead of contracting to wild promises based on the fuzziness of getting a sale at all costs. In addition, such customer visits become opportunities for you to review your processes for improvement and help you become more competitive. Having a QMS helps enormously to improve the communication within your organization, whether that be cross-functional, cross-departmental, or cross-location. A QMS helps you to take a structured approach to correcting mistakes or defects. Corrective actions and preventive actions, also known as CAPA, are consistently undertaken based on a priority and diligence driven by risk, which places first things first. A QMS-based CAPA process also ensures that higher risk problems and issues are promptly, properly dealt with and do not return. Risk, of course, can and should be considered both from a safety and a business point of view. 
see improved customer or client satisfaction from a more formalized and thorough QMS driven complaint handling system that always closes the loop with the customer. See fewer defects, rework or scrap at the various points of quality control because of an improved QMS based design process. See improved design because of better voice of customer input to requirements and specifications. Secondly, clarify. First and foremost, a quality management system will clarify roles and responsibilities. Everyone knows what their area of responsibility is, what is expected of them, who their internal or external suppliers and customers are, and who is responsible for what. A QMS will help everyone in your company or organization understand what your internal operational processes are and how they link from your suppliers through your manufacturing or service operations to your customers or clients. Employees all understand where their contribution fits into the big picture. A QMS will drive consistency in staff training as well as continuous improvement in staff training. All the above lead to improved staff morale and happier customers with miscommunication identified and rectified early. Thirdly and finally, control. A QMS gives form and substance to your organization's commitment to a vision and mission, linking what you aim to achieve with the who and the how of your internal operational processes. A well-implemented QMS enables you to control your processes for greater effectiveness and efficiency, enabling your staff to feel pride in their work and demonstrate their value. QMS-driven performance of internal processes drives greater consistency in output and final product, whether manufacturing or service. This, in turn, drives the identification of opportunities for improvement. As required by a QMS, measurable, continuous improvement in quality and productivity will become part of the organization culture, the way we do things. A well-implemented and sensible QMS will ensure regular measurement, trending, and reporting to executive management of critical indicators or key performance indicators known as KPIs. These provide a view of current operational performance as well as a heads up on areas of concern which warrant further investigation. The above controls will result in improved customer satisfaction from the delivery of better quality products with the early detection of fewer faults and defects, all before final delivery. A well-implemented and sensible QMS will lead to less waste of time and materials, cutting costs and improving profitability. Yeah, awesome. That was another very good example. And in fact, that's the reason I like this, I will say almost eight minute long video that explained QMS system. So in general, in any company, if you are talking about quality system or quality in general or quality control, uh, by default, uh, the big time managers or you know, the quality engineers or quality analysts are talking about uh, the quality, uh, yeah, com one, uh, a few of the components of the quality management system. So yeah, in this video, I, I like the way this narrator explained what it is, why it is, and then he went ahead with those three simplified uh, benefits. Those are, yeah, like the first one is simplify. And again, a few very good terminologies they used. And I think for the scope of this class, I think those are the only ones uh, that, that should you should know. Uh, yeah, so yeah, site widgets, void of customer. That was a very good example given. And again, he mentioned, you know, all those procedures, policies, Usually they're documented and approved, and in the company, uh, the yeah, that is posted as a you know some kind of web page. So every time there might be an auditor coming, there might be a yeah like a customer coming, and you always uh, it, it, I mean it's it's a rule that uh, you know the, your pol your pol quality policy or quality management policy must be uh, yeah every employee must be aware of where it is and where to find it. That's one key thing that yeah that's as per the quality like ISO requirement. Second part is some good example given with respect to the communication and the kappa. So I think yeah, for the scope of this class, I think this is the bare minimal that is uh, yeah that, that, that yeah you must know. And the next very important part they talked about you know clearly clarifying that was the second main uh, benefit that is clarifying the key roles and responsibilities. And yeah, they also give very good depiction uh, examples. And lastly, they talked about control. And again, control is another huge topic. Well, I would say all three simplification that is also a big concept in itself. Second part is the clarification. And again, it's an ongoing process. 
and uh, third one is uh, even bigger is a control spot and uh, that's uh, our next topic we'll be learning topic number 10 chapter number 10 that is quality control and over there we'll be uh, looking like in uh, one level uh, below i mean one level further and we'll be understanding few like what those control charts are and what are the key terminologies but i think yeah i think this was another very good uh, video example so i highly recommend you guys watching this video at least couple times and uh, yeah understand on a high level what what yeah what the narrator said i think he very well uh, explained it to the uh, point with some good depictions so that was our video number 2 now let's watch the last video over here uh, i think this might be a repetition let's see so yeah this is a repetition meanings Oops. yeah let, let's go to the next one five dimensions yeah let's go to example of quality management if you're looking for a career where you can really make a difference in the world to help and connect with others this is andy andy has a business making orange juice andy's orange juice is made fresh served cold and is well orangey and juicy. So how does a business like Andy's benefit from the application of quality management? This is the handy guide to... By the way up. That's it. Quality. Like many businesses, Andy manages a process to form a product, which he sells. Obviously, it involves oranges. Andy knows his business like the back of his hand, but he thinks improvements could be made. The problem is, where to begin? So he begins with Mandy. Mandy is a quality manager, and she and Andy will be knuckling down to find out how to improve the organization. So what do we mean by quality? Here are some handy tips from Mandy. Quality isn't only about how good Andy's orange juice tastes. It's a word that applies to every system, process and practice that delivers a product or service to a customer. Quality means delivering efficient systems and increasing profits. Meeting or even exceeding the customer's expectations. A quality professional like Mandy starts by exploring what the customer wants. Is there a difference, for instance, between what the customer wants and what the customer gets. Every customer is different, and Andy needs to keep them all sweet. Ah, three of Andy's customers aren't satisfied, but why? Luckily, Mandy's got some tricks, um, up her sleeve. Quality professionals design processes to gauge and respond to the customer's expectations. Andy's orange juice is served with juicy bits in. But Mandy discovers that 30% of his customers would actually prefer their OJ smooth. So Mandy has a solution. This is the Juicitron 4000. The Turbo Juicer. For smooth juice, or juice with juicy bits. So, with the help of a quality professional, Andy's grown his business, kept more customers, diversified his product, and improved the production process. And he's no longer a one-man band. Let's see how they're doing. With all those thirsty customers, Andy has to keep production ticking over like clockwork. Juice output has doubled, but there's always room for improvement, and quality professionals like Mandy are constantly on the lookout. Even small changes can make a huge difference. Together, Andy and Mandy have raised productivity, satisfied the customer's needs, increased profits, and kept the workforce happy. 
Andy and Mandy seem to have clicked. And so Andy can now think about how to grow the business even further. The quest for quality never ends, and Mandy is ready to meet any challenge. Quality and good business go hand in hand. Awesome, guys. That was another very good depiction of about how Andy and Mandy understood uh, what the customer exactly liked. Uh, yeah, they did their own research, uh, found a new technology that could do the job, get the two types of juices that customer liked, uh, you know, in equal, I would say, fraction or proportions. And then eventually uh, they were able to sell more and make more profits. And then they decided to add more flavors, uh, grow the business. So I think that was a very good uh, depiction of the whole quality management system combined with business. So on that, that topic, yeah, here are the 10 questions uh, that I request you guys to answer or and email me. Uh, or uh, rather, it would be, I, I think it would be better. Yeah, let, let me change the plan. Maybe I'll post a small quiz, a 10 point quiz based on uh, these videos as well as the remaining PowerPoint slides. And uh, yeah, you guys just, just answer those uh, and I think you should be good, yeah. So I'll, I'll send out the email instructions about what to do. So yeah, we have a change of plan here. Uh, do not answer these uh, 10, uh, sorry, five questions from question six to 10. Rather, I will open up a quiz. Uh, so you have to watch this uh, whole uh, remaining video lecture and answer the questions based on that and you should uh, receive the points. Yeah, awesome. So that was about the quality management uh, as well as management system. Moving forward, uh, some more uh, yeah uh, important topics related to this uh, quality and in general uh, service quality is yeah the audit. Oftentimes you might have seen uh, you know the, the, you you might hear a lot of you know auditing. So every once a year or twice a year, depending upon what category of uh, quality your companies uh, like follows, whether it is safety, whether it is actual product quality, service quality, or vendor quality, or yeah, like supplier quality, or maybe there are some critical processes that need additional uh, controls. So oftentimes you will hear that, you know, it's, uh, there is going to be an audit. So yeah, the quality department and even the related departments get busy with uh, the, yeah, the audit preparation and so on. So that's another uh, important uh, part of uh, yeah, like a corporation. So it's more of a regulatory uh, service. Uh, so this service is in charge of uh, you know maintaining quality, making sure the company is following all the quality rules, regulations, and uh, yeah, uh, following their standards as defined by the national or international quality standard organizations. So yeah, their main job is to come and identify the strengths and weaknesses. In generally, again, I mean when when the desired quality uh, high say certification is granted to your company so 9000 9000 14000 or 13485 or it could be safety as well environmental as well so when it is granted uh, yeah the the main service the organization the control uh, organization auditing organization uh, gives out hands out uh, some uh, yeah formal rule, rules regulation that have to followed uh, permanently uh, within those uh, like uh, desired processes. So here their job is to identify the strengths and weaknesses. So in particularly, these are the, uh, the yeah, they are looking for these uh, list of dis discrepancies. And again, I will let you guys read this because I think this is this was covered in you know partially uh, within the videos. And uh, yeah, uh, I, I think this is this is straight from the textbook. So yeah, you guys can read it and understand it. Next part is yeah, the key determinants of quality. And again, there are like as per the theory, there are four. Uh, yeah, I will yeah let you guys read this, but again, I would like to run this short video that again gives a very good uh, demo of what these determinants are. How is quality determined? So in the previous level, we talked about uh, the different dimensions of quality. So as we look at the product that we're making, we have to figure out Okay, what is it our customers are looking for? So let's look at bottled water, for example. And if we're looking at the dimensions of quality, uh, the performance, what are we looking for from water? It needs to be refreshing, it needs to be drinkable. Uh, aesthetics, we need it to be clear looking, not have chunks of things in it. 
right? We need it to con have conformance. That is, it was designed to have a certain amount of um, particulates or mineral in it, and how well does it meet that design? We don't want to have, so for example, if we look at a bottle of water, it was designed to have very little arsenic in it, okay, 0%. And does it actually have 0% arsenic in it? So how well does it conform to how it was designed? So we know what the customer is looking for from our products based on those dimensions of quality. Now we need to look at where is quality impacted? So what are the determinants of quality? Well, first, we need to design our product. So we have product design. That's the first place where quality can be impacted. So are you designing quality characteristics into the product? So if we're saying that uh, water needs to be uh, clear and it needs to not have a salty taste, then we need to come up with a way to make water that is not going to have that. So we have the product itself and then we have the process design. That is, now that we know we're going to make bottled water, how are we going to make that bottled water? There are different ways you can uh, create water, right? It can be water from a spring, water from a well. You can take river water and uh, clean it up. So what is your source of water? So we know that we want our water to be clear and not taste salty and have zero arsenic in it. Now we need to create a design process that is going to give us what we, what we designed our water to be. So with process design, we're going to look at our process flow diagram and look at how we're going, what steps we're going to take uh, to purify our water. Maybe we're going to use well water. So here's a schematic for a well. And what we're looking at is the steps to create drinkable water because our product design says our water should be, should be drinkable. Okay, well, we're going to filter the water by using first uh, some big rocks, then smaller rocks, and that's supposed to pull out a lot of the particulate. So the process flow diagram is going to show our steps. We have a schematic here that's going to show part of the process. And what we're looking at is we're looking at fitness for use. So how well does our product do what it is supposed to? So we designed this water to be drinkable. We have a process that is supposed to follow to clean up the water and make the well water drinkable. And so when we do those steps in that process flow diagram, do we end up with drinkable water? That is fitness for use. How well does our product do what it's supposed to do? So we have creating the product itself to make sure it has the characteristics that our customers think are quality. We have the steps of our process to make sure that everything we're doing adds to the quality and not takes away. And then we have the actual production process. So everything so far has been designed. Now we're actually going to uh, be purifying our water. And we do our actual production. Does that actual production, does it have conformance? So this is the degree to which our actual good we're producing matches uh, the design. So are we actually getting what we think we're getting? Are we getting the clean water, the clear water, the no particulates, the no arsenic that we intended based on what the product is and how we plan to make it? So when we look at quality, where can quality be impacted? It can be impacted in what it is you're trying to make, how it is you try to make it, or in your implementation. If your process doesn't match your product design, then you don't have fitness for use. If your actual production doesn't match your design, then you don't have conformance. So when we look at a bottle of water, you'll notice that on the back, it lists all kinds of parts per million for the different minerals in the water. And so what they're doing there is they are measuring conformance. Does it match the design? Well, their design would have a limited amount of different types of minerals, and arsenic, the goal is 0%, and does it actually match that? So what happens if you don't have good quality? So that was uh, like another very good uh, example, uh, and all these four topics were covered within that uh, for the determinants of quality. Uh, moving forward, uh, yeah, like these are the, you know, the key roles or key people uh, who own the responsibility of quality throughout your organization. So again, uh, you can see uh, like list, uh, I mean, this list covers all the uh, phases or all the, uh, yeah, like uh, uh, different levels of uh, people, uh, like yeah, top level management to the design guys, procurement guys, production operations guys, quality assurance, and even as like yeah, operators. So all the areas uh, of, or all the levels uh, of an organization organizations are covered in this. So indirectly, uh, the, the the main point is uh, each and every employee working in the company uh, owns uh, their own responsibility towards the uh, quality. Uh, 
Uh, it's just that for some guys, like quality department, quality control guys, quality uh, assurance guys, quality managers, quality management like uh, systems guys, quality analysts, they have some even more in-depth uh, detailed responsibilities towards quality. Uh, and on the other hand, uh, like all the other employees do hold a responsibility towards quality. And yeah, these are the benefits an organization uh, gets uh, like by by maintaining good quality in their organization. So again, it enhances re a reputation uh, of you know of your organization. Product services that you offer, you gain market share because there is a good uh, you know feel good word going on outside in the market. So yeah, you gain more customers, you earn more uh, yeah uh, market share. Customers uh, highly likely will stick to you for a longer term, a lower li liability cost. And again, there are fewer reworks, uh, few yeah, like fewer customer return, fewer complaints. So yeah, like uh, more margins, uh, more profits. Consequences of pure quality again, like if uh, the business is losing, uh, you know, like is having lots of quality issues, lot of customer complaints, returns, uh, reworks required, uh, uh, and so on. So again, the customers will be unhappy. They will be yeah, they they won't stay loyal to you. Your business goes uh, lower. Liability issues come into picture, productivity goes down because yeah, you're spending more time in the reworking. And again, all those extra work uh, adds cost, so that reduces your profit margins. Uh, uh, like few typical, and I will say these are planned. Yeah, the appraisal cost is suddenly like planned within the, the cost of your organization to maintain a good quality. So again, you have a whole quality department, quality personnel, quality tools. Uh, yeah, and uh, I think services like, you know, calibration of all the tools, uh, make sure they're right, uh, yeah, timely calibrated, timely monitored, timely, uh, yeah, you do some checks and making sure things are working as per the defined global standard, national standard, inter international standards, and so on. So that's your uh, appraisal cost. Same, in case there is an issue, you have a total quality training. So yeah, and again, these kind of trainings are offered, uh, I will say highly likely to all the employees. Uh, like, yeah, specific for the related departments, yeah, engineering, service, quality, supply chain, uh, yeah, like, uh, you know, some are general trainings, some of them are very specific to the role, uh, quality trainings. So all the money invested in those uh, also adds. And again, uh, the, the category here is the prevention cost. And again, the bigger cost, like failure cost, in case there are uh, defective parts. So that's that's the biggest, uh, yeah, the, the worst case scenario. Uh, so again, these uh, yeah contributors are higher. It could be higher if it is like even a bigger uh, issues, bigger uh, failure happens. And within them also there are a couple categories, internal failures, external uh, failures. Internal failures are all the failures or defect identified before the product or service ships out of your company. And external are the one that happens at the customer site and that's the biggest riskiest, yeah. So again, the focus for our, every organization must be to maintain these failure as low as possible. Again, if you ask me like if uh, can be maintained as zero, it depends upon the complexity of the product, and I, I will say every product and service. Most of the, uh, I will say, high value, high margin, high profitable products services are complex in nature. So very less likely you will ever attain a zero defect. But again, the goal should be to uh, to minimize that as much as possible. And few uh, important terminologies. I will say, yeah, I mean, formally they call it as ethics and quality. But again, uh, you might have seen in your organization as well, like wherever you go, you will see lots of, uh, I say posters everywhere, uh, you know, notes everywhere. They, it's, that clearly says quality first approach. Uh, yeah, each every company follows quality first approach, meaning anybody working for that company has the right to stop the job if they see anything wrong with the process, product or service being offered. And while doing so, they can stop the job. They have to raise a concern to the supervisor. Supervisor should immediately contact the right people, engineering or quality managers, bring them in, uh, take the corrective action. And once, uh, yeah, they, like first is to verify if it's a real problem. And if a real problem is identified, take the corrective action, implement a solution. Uh, some solutions are easy. Uh, some solutions are long-term. So if there is a long-term solution, then you identify uh, what is a quick fix to get to keep the uh, work going. And in the meantime, work on the long-term solution implemented. So yeah, that's that's uh, called uh, yeah that's uh, overall yeah that's the uh, concept of ethics in quality. So yeah, uh, having well yeah that, that's what this uh, sentence states over here. Having knowledge of uh, any uh, uh, issue uh, on quality issue uh, on the factory floor or your service uh, office where the service is being uh, created or offered. 
So not raising the uh, knowledge, uh, failing to correct that issue or report the issue in a timely manner is considered unethical. And yeah, these are some of the examples of uh, substandard work, defective products. So if you have knowledge of you know, any product being uh, manufactured in a defective way, more scrap or wrongly uh, processed, uh, raise a flag, bring it to do the attention of your uh, respective supervisors, managers. And uh, yeah, uh, you have the right to stop the work. So that's your quality first approach. Next is another very important, I will say, uh, concept or yeah, this is among the topmost award offered in the United States. And here are the six categories uh, which qualify for this award. So let's watch a quick video. And again, uh, the, in this video, the, the explanation is really uh, well. Uh, let's watch uh, the introduction to Baldridge video first. Welcome to Baldridge, your roadmap to performance excellence. And again, uh, this is a very long video, 12 minutes. We'll be watching almost, say, uh, five minutes of the video. And I think that's the key information you should take from uh, this video. And again, I think, yeah, very important. Uh, I will say a quality organization's name has been flashed over here, NIST, National Institute of Standards uh, and Technology, as per the US Department of uh, Commerce. Every year since its inception in 1987, the Baldridge Performance Excellence Program has identified organizations that have demonstrated quality and performance excellence and recognized them with the Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Award. The 2010 recipients join 84 previous honorees as the best of America's best in manufacturing, service, small business, education, healthcare, and nonprofit. Companies that use the Baldridge criteria take a hard look at how they manage and operate their organizations. Baldridge applicants receive a feedback report that identifies strengths, weaknesses, and high-impact improvements. While hundreds of organizations participate in the award process, thousands more self-assess using the criteria to drive improvement. Texas has more Baldridge winners than any other state. To date, 93 organizations have received the Baldridge Award. 15 of those organizations are headquartered in Texas. Over a four-year period, various Texas winners have achieved these results. Some of these companies have less than 100 employees. If they can achieve these kinds of results, so can you. So welcome to an introduction to Baldridge, brought to you by the Baldridge Babes. As Baldridge practitioners, we've used our decades of experience to design this program for organizations taking their first steps to performance excellence. As you watch this overview of our program, we encourage you to look for ideas that apply to your company, think about how you could adapt the program to fit your needs, and above all, use this opportunity to learn more about Baldridge. Hi, I'm Jennifer, the Baldridge Babes Assistant. As you watch this video, we'd like you to think about what areas of performance you most want to improve, what challenges you face today. Are key tasks taking too long? Do you hear certain customer complaints over and over? Is employee retention a problem? These are the kinds of issues that Baldridge companies tackle and solve on their journeys to performance excellence. We'd like you to keep your own challenges in mind as you watch this video. Consider how using the Baldridge criteria could help improve your performance. Bye for now. What makes this approach so different? Baldridge starts with the key processes your organization needs for success. Then it takes this model one step further by defining the connections between those processes. This system's perspective helps you tackle organizational barriers and move to higher levels of performance. This is the secret that helps companies move past the initial stages of improvement to a sustainable model of success. We follow process steps every day when we drive to work, stand in line for coffee, or create a report. Our processes provide the basis to perform work consistently. Consistency allows us to measure our work. And measures can be used to drive continuous improvement in all of our work. This PDCA cycle represents the continuous improvement process, which is at the heart of the Baldridge criteria. The improvement cycle begins with planning. We define a process that meets clear customer expectations. In the do phase, we implement the process and collect measurement data. We check the results to see if the process actually meets customer expectations. Then we act to improve the work. To understand our own progress toward continuous improvement, we can analyze our processes using a straightforward process maturity model. Informal processes are the methods we've developed on the fly that work well enough most of the time. Yeah, awesome. So that was the useful information from this video. And again, I think uh, the narrator started very well by explaining what the award is, what are the different categories. Uh, and again, there are a few terms that uh, they used, something like high impact processes, high impact results, and so on. And again, in any quality world, uh, if you're working for a company for a long time, 
these are the exact uh, terms you'll be uh, listen, uh, yeah, hearing a lot from the you know senior level managers or quality managers or you know every time a quality issue is reported uh, they also mentioned something about the process excellence and that's exactly what even i you know i keep uh, seeing uh, every uh, every time i get an opportunity is like yeah the, the technologies and i will say the newer managements uh, the keywords they are uh, liking these days is the process excellence or operational excellence indirectly it means the same it's all about reducing the variability within the process and i think that's what this uh, i'll say yeah uh, badridge babe uh, explained so again it's all about uh, keeping the variation as low as possible identifying uh, the different ways to reduce the variation and keep things consistent and yeah some more things were uh, yeah explained over here i think that was very valuable and towards the end they talked uh, yeah this is the whole, like step by step process and towards the end they very well explained about the pdc uh, uh, ca or these days it's called, also called as pdsa which is plan do yeah currently it's plan do check act uh, yeah sometimes they also use pd study act uh, well again there is a minor difference in uh, within that so again yeah th this this is the these are the key uh, things to know about uh, this whole uh, baldrige uh, competition board uh, yeah and the award of excellence let's watch another small video and again yeah this is another small and again it explains a bit more about the same so this is like almost one and a half minute long video the baldridge award explained the malcolm baldridge national quality award recognizes u.s organizations in the business healthcare education and nonprofit sectors for performance excellence the Baldridge Award is the only formal recognition of the performance excellence of both public and private U.S. organizations given by the President of the United States. It is administered by the Baldridge Performance Excellence Program, which is based at and managed by the National Institute of Standards and Technology, NIST, an agency of the U.S. Department of Commerce. Up to 18 awards may be given annually across six eligibility categories, manufacturing, service, small business, education, healthcare, and nonprofit. The Baldridge Performance Excellence Program and the associated award were established by the Malcolm Baldridge National Quality Improvement Act of 1987, Public Law 100-107. The program and award were named for Malcolm Baldrige, who served as United States Secretary of Commerce during the Reagan administration, from 1981 until Baldrige's 1987 death in a rodeo accident. In 2010, the program's name was changed to the Baldrige Performance Excellence Program. The award is not given for specific products or services. So again, that was another very good informative video about the same competition and uh, the program Baldrige competition uh, or the Baldrige uh, the Performance Excellence Award. Yeah, I think yeah, we learned about the categories, purpose, as well as the what are the key criteria as they look into it. Uh, moving forward, few again, uh, yeah, few, like few important terminologies to know is this quality certification. And here on the screen, you are seeing the most, like three most uh, important or the basic type, almost all the organizations uh, have, like get certifications from. And again, depending upon what industry you are, there might be industry specific as well. Uh, and here, for example, yeah, like uh, my immediate previous job was medical device. So again, uh, lots of FDA regulations and within those FDA regulations, depending upon what micro device that we make, uh, each device would have like a, a different specification coming from either ISO or FDA. So again, these are the three most important uh, certifications to know about. So that's, that's what has been stated over here. Uh, let's pick the first one, ISO, International uh, Organization of Standards, uh, ISO 9000, and see what are the uh, details and the procedures, principles here. So uh, uh, as per ISO 9000, here are the quality principles and uh, that you know each organization has to follow. The first one being customer focus. So, you know, every activity, every process that is being designed must have, you know, uh, you know the, the, I will say each department, each uh, planner, uh, engineers, designers must keep the customer need in focus. Second part is it should be a complete leadership approach. Uh, it should involve people. And I will say all the people, uh, not like, yeah, we, you shouldn't be leaving out anybody. All the uh, people uh, must be involved uh, within this uh, quality principle. I should have a systematic process approach. 
uh, it's supposed to have a system approach to management. Yeah, I think that's the more of the quality management system. Uh, almost, uh, yeah, every time you have to focus on the continuous improvement. Uh, and again, this is a big methodology. We'll be talking a bit more about the same thing, continuous improvement or continuous improvement uh, in the last part of this uh, lecture as well as uh, in the next lecture as well. And then, uh, yeah, you have to uh, yeah uh, rely on facts uh, rather than just brainstorming or a hearsay or yeah, making a prediction, making a guess that you know, there is a may maybe a problem is coming from a certain source. So maybe we must redesign this and uh, yeah, take those. So rather than having that approach, uh, you must yeah uh, emphasize more on actual evidence collection, uh, verifying if it is real, uh, verifying the facts, getting some numbers, observations, uh, and uh, make a decision based on those. And uh, yeah, almost. Uh, like yeah, uh, uh, every time create a, a beneficial, like a, yeah, a very good relations with the suppliers, vendors, customers, internal customers, external containers, uh, cross-functional teams, and so on. So that's there. Yeah, so these are the uh, um, important principles you should be following. And similarly for other ones, yeah, like as per the uh, uh, rule book, uh, there, there are lists which are very similar. But again, you have to follow those principles. So I think again, yeah, for the scope of this class, I think this is uh, more than sufficient to know. Moving forward to yeah the next part, and again, I just have one slide right now. Uh, later on, we'll be talking about quality and supply chain in our next lecture, as well as there is a whole lecture dedicated for supply chain itself. But yeah, indirectly, yeah, this is what it means. So again, uh, business and lead, uh, business leaders must uh, are like increasingly recognizing the importance of their supply chain in achieving their goals. And like I always say, you know, this supply chain methodology came into picture after the you know strong globalization started some 20 or 22 years uh, ago. So that's when this concept, uh, yeah, got a second life, a big life, and again, it's all modernized and still uh, today as well. With all those modern technologies, data technologies, it's still uh, growing uh, even bigger and uh, broader, and uh, yeah, it is getting even better. So again, on that note, let's watch a couple short videos that explain the same. And again, I, I am relying a lot on video, like YouTube videos, because I really like the way they use the visuals and give examples. If your investment properties make you less than 5K monthly pass. This is Mr. Smith. He is the quality director at Top Process. Mr. Smith is in charge to ensure that all products meet the quality standards of Top Process's customers. Mr. Smith likes innovative ideas. He uses an effective quality assurance system. This helps him improve the production quality. Now he really deserves to enjoy a comfortable life. But unfortunately, it is not always that easy. Top Process has to count on premium supplier goods. That's why Mr. Smith has a separate team, the IQC team of his incoming quality control department. Its only job is to make sure all incoming goods meet top processes' high quality standards. Mr. Miller is the manager of Pure Sure Clean, and he is one of top processes' premium suppliers. Mr. Smith insists on special shipping documents, which are called Certificates of Analysis, or COA for short. Top Process's IQC team uses this information to verify, does Top Process really get what they ordered? Are the supplier goods compliant with existing agreements? Do the delivered goods meet the quality standards? Do the parts come from qualified plants? This is uh -huh. Mr. Brown. He is not satisfied. He just received goods from Top Process causing failures. Therefore, he had to stop his sales of top process laptops, which led to a delay in his delivery schedule and unhappy customers. He now asks for the reason and when could he expect a replacement. Mr. Smith apologizes and promises prompt replacement. After intensive research at top process, it turns out a defective supply pot from Pure Short Clean slipped through top process's strict quality controls. So one of the IQC team members takes up the challenge and asks himself, is there a better way to do this job? Okay, for top process, an electronic paperless approach would be a solution. But Mr. Smith wants more. He is looking for an efficient business solution that could help them further increase their lead on the market. 
At Camline, we are developing a quality management system for supply chains. With Camline's lining up suite, we are determined to help Mr. Smith with an efficient business solution to increase his lead on the market. Before shipment, the suppliers share quality data online using electronic COAs and operations are managed by interactive approvals. Mr. Smith can reduce the efforts of his incoming quality control team. For trusted suppliers, he can even skip these checks. Now the suppliers issue perfect custom-made eCOAs. Mr. Smith gets analyses on hand, quality data of manufacturing. How are they correlated with suppliers' quality? The modern system increases the quality from the suppliers. It aligns them with KPIs and the reports allow benchmarking. Last but not least, all the right information will be collected, which also allows to reduce approval times for new supply chains. Mr. Brown is looking for more information about eCOAs. He wants to install Camline solution for his own supply chains as soon as possible. Learn more about the quality management system for supply chains on the Cam. So again, that was another very good example. Uh, yeah, I think it was just a bare demo simulation created. But again, some of the terminologies used are like very, very real. Yeah, that uh, IQC department, incoming uh, quality control department. I think almost all the organizations have it. And again, uh, there were some terminologies mentioned like COA. So I think uh, the terminology I have always used is the COC, which is um, a conformance, yeah, certificate of conformance. Uh, so again, you have to check it, make sure the numbers do match. And again, uh, most of the times, uh, companies do have a separate database. It could be as simple as an Excel database, or it could be some advanced databases where the information has to be fed, collected. And uh, yeah, the quality analyst or quality supervisor or quality uh, engineer gives their signature and only then the uh, specific lots can be used. Let's watch the second video on the same topic. Watch 100 plus channels of live TV. economy, most organizations know they can't go it alone. To build products and services that customers demand, businesses must forge partnerships with each other. Now, some may be right down the street, while others could be across the globe. So how do you ensure you're adding the right partners to your supply chain process? Milton Krivakuka says you include quality in the equation. Any process that's in existence anywhere, especially one as enormous and complex as a global supply chain, has direct applications for the basic tools of quality. There are three basic approaches organizations can use to form reliable, trusted supplier relationships and efficient supply chain processes. Communicate specific information to suppliers about product and service requirements so there are no surprises and performance levels can be bet right away. Craft a supplier quality plan with suppliers so all sides can address any improvement opportunities. Determine what quality certifications your suppliers must have so you know they have standard operating procedures. Define quality processes and procedures for document control and training. This is really critical because as we move from one country to the other, levels of expectations for product and service performance varies. By using quality tools and techniques and methodologies, we can get it to where there's an understanding so that there's uh, the expectations are met. To read more about what goes into building a solid supply chain, visit ASQ's Customer Supply Division library at the link below. Awesome. So that was a very, very good video. Again, it was, it was a solid supply chain. short video, but again, all the term terminologies mentioned were very useful. And again, the yeah, this guy uh, towards the end says a a ASQ. So uh, yeah, I'll send out a separate email uh, explaining what ASQ is and uh, what are the different certifications I talked about. Yeah, all the black belts and green belts, uh, which are very highly valued by industry. And few things over oh, yeah, I think this uh, professor at California, yeah. Uh, yeah, sorry, uh, the yeah, quality program coordinator at California State University. He mentioned about uh, the complexities in global supply chain, and that's a reality, and everybody knows it. And that's one of a re strong reason why we all have jobs is because of that complexity in the global supply chain, or I'll say global uh, businesses. Almost every corporation, some way or another, is connected internationally, globally. Uh, so as long as that is there, uh, believe me, we will all be ha ha have our jobs. And again, these are the critical things to uh, focus on uh, as say, we move forward. So again, yeah, here in this case, it is quality and supply chain uh, merging together. And again, in the, in the initial part of the video, this guy says about, you know, you have to have strong collaborative relations uh, with suppliers, vendors, self, customers, internal, external, everyone. So that is a reality. Uh, more relations you build, uh, more things you will learn, more things you can improve, and more, uh, yeah, like uh, profits will be more, revenues will be more, and lots of improvements here. Yeah? So the, I think in this very, very short video, these are the key takeaways. Uh, moving forward, yeah, we saw this. The next concept is TQM, and again, this is one of a huge and very, very, very important uh, topic. And again, rather than just reading the theory, let's let's quickly watch this very interesting video. And again, this, I think uh, within this uh, lecture, I think, this is my most favorite uh, short video, so let's let's watch it. 
for about a dollar a day, this new company. Total quality management is an approach to serving customers that involves totally re-engineering processes and systems to improve products and services in the way customers expect while considering the needs of employees and relationships with suppliers. W. Edwards Deming, Joseph Duran, and Philip B. Crosby each developed a different aspect of TQM. We will learn about how each contributed to how we think about TQM today. The TQM approach began as a means of repairing the damage Japan suffered post-World War II. W. Edwards Deming worked with Japanese automobile manufacturers to improve the quality of their products in an effort to gain a competitive foot in the industry. His philosophy resulted in the 14 points of TQM, which can be summed up by saying management must redesign their processes and systems to plan, do, check, and act. Let's see how TQM is implemented at Beefy's Burgers. To plan, Deming counsels that businesses should design quality products and services that customers want, develop processes and systems that reduce waste and increase quality, and decrease the cost of production. Deming wanted to revolutionize the way Beefy's Burgers produces burgers. To gain a better understanding of the customer preferences, he surveyed everyone involved in the operation from the customers to the employees. He even called his suppliers in to get their opinions. From the information collected, Deming was able to determine a few important things. Beefy's was competitive on price, however the burger was small and flavorless. He called his employees in and showed them how to properly grill the burgers. He called his supplier in to discuss alternatives to the current beef he uses. A timing schedule for completion of burger orders was set. No burger would hit the grill until the customer placed an order. Tomorrow would be go time. Next, the businesses must do the work by putting the plan into action. As processes and systems are running, they must continually seek ways to do things better. Deming's crew knew exactly what to do. Stations were set up for bun slicing, burger grilling, and ketchup squeezing. As customers placed their orders, the beef hit the grill, the bun was sliced 1.2 seconds after and delivered to the grill. Ketchup was squeezed and the process ended with wrapping. Customers were thrilled with the new and improved burgers. However, during busy times, it wasn't feasible to make each burger as ordered. Lines formed creating more customer complaints. This time, complaints were about the system. As work moves through the processes and systems, checkpoints will monitor changes that need to take place. Changes like removing barriers to quality by providing employees with the tools needed to do the job right the first time. Finally, managers take action. Management may make changes. Deming tweaked a few things to speed up the process by placing more people on the line. Customers received their burgers on time and they were tasty too. Joseph Duran shared a connection with Deming. Duran's approach to quality control also had Japanese roots. While Japan was price competitive with the rest of the world, the quality of product did not measure up. Like Deming, Duran stressed the importance of total quality management. However, he summed it up by saying total quality management begins at the top of an organization and works its way down. He developed 10 steps to quality improvement. The steps boil down to three main areas of management decision making. Quality planning, quality control, and quality improvement. Quality planning involves building an awareness of the need to improve, setting goals and planning for ways goals can be reached. This begins with management's commitment to plan change. It also requires a highly trained and qualified staff. Duran managed beefies during the night shift. He set the standard for quality during his shift by training each employee on how to properly make a burger. Quality control means to develop ways to test products and services for quality. Any deviation from the standard will require changes and improvements. On Sunday nights when business was slow, Duran invited mystery diners to come to Beefy's to rate the quality of the burgers. If he found that a diner was displeased, he retrained his employees. Quality improvement is a continuous pursuit towards perfection. Management analyzes processes and systems and reports back with praise and recognition when things are done right. Duran allowed the staff to engage in a well-deserved burger eating contest at the end of a profitable shift. Philip B. Crosby was a contemporary leader in TQM. He didn't engineer principles or steps. He simply made TQM easier for the layman to implement by breaking it down to an understandable ideology that organizations should adopt. Crosby redefined quality to mean conformity to standards set by the industry or organization that must align with customer needs. There are four absolutes of quality management necessary for conformity. Quality is defined as conformance to standards. The system for causing quality is prevention. The performance standard is not arbitrary. It must be without defect. The measurement of quality is price of non-conformance. Crosby worked the register at Beefy's. He was also a business student at a local college. He used Beefy's as a field study on TQM. When customers sent back burgers, he looked at the price of inferior products and its toll on the overall organization. These four absolutes can be summed up to mean that quality is based on an industry or organizational standard, not flawlessness. That standard must be upheld. 
Inferior quality is preventable through processes that ensure quality, and the real measurement of quality is the price an organization pays for nonconformance to the quality standards set by the organization. Nonconformance to quality standards causes waste, and wasted products cost money. Crosby gets that Beefy Burgers is a fast food joint. He did not demand a high-quality burger like those served at a steakhouse. He demanded that burgers served at Beefy's meet the standards that Beefy sets for their burgers. In summary, W. Edwards Deming, Joseph Duran, and Philip B. Crosby are three of the most influential people involved in total quality management. Total quality management is an approach to serving customers that involves the total re-engineering of processes and systems to improve products and services in the way customers expect, while considering the needs of employees and relationships with suppliers. Deming, Duran, and Crosby believe that total quality management was the most important approach an organization can take to be competitive. Deming developed 14 principles of TQM. Condensing, they suggest that management, with total organizational involvement, must plan processes and systems to improve quality based on preset standards that align with customers' needs. Management must put the plan into action by doing the right things to ensure quality while continuously checking outcomes for flaws in the processes. If a process is not working, management must take swift action to make it right. Duran theorized that quality planning is done by building an awareness of quality improvements and ways to achieve it. Quality control meant measuring quality every step of the way, and quality improvement involved making changes to processes and systems that do not work. Crosby looked at the cost of poor quality. He defined quality to be more about conforming to standards than to imperfection. For this, he developed four absolutes management must follow with a customer focus in mind. Standards of conformity must be developed, poor quality should be preventable by processes and systems within management's control, the standard set must not allow for any deviation from the standard, and quality can be measured by the price of nonconformance. When you awesome. So that was another very, very important, interesting video. And I will say all the information provided uh, th throughout, you know, from start to end uh, was very valuable. And if you remember in our last lecture, we saw a similar example of the process mapping, uh, you know, breaking down each task into small, small elements, then timing them and forming a, st a standardized flow uh, using the McDonald example. So even this example was a similar and I'll say it was exactly the same, but this time it, the focus was on applying the quality principles as stated by the three legions I mentioned in this video. So yeah, I think, you know, that's that's the key thing about how quality is like, you know, the more you do, you more you, you understand. So again, in this video, it was very well explained. Uh, coming back to our main topic. So yeah, this is totally quality, uh, total quality management. Moving forward, yeah, these are the approaches we saw it in the videos. So I let it, you guys read it. I think same is the case with the elements. We saw these as well. Uh, moving forward, the next concept is continuous improvement. And again, for the scope of this class, I think this is the only slide I have. And as we go in the next lecture, as well as the next few lectures, we are going to touch this topic again and again. So on a basic level, uh, this is the philosophy that seeks uh, uh, to make never-ending improvements to the process of converting inputs into outputs here. Yeah? So again, it's a never-ending improvement here. Yeah? Every time uh, you implement the best known process or to the best to your ability process onto the floor, start making things or start offering the services. And as you go, some new idea comes in, you, you identify some defects and so on. You improve it one step at a time and yeah, continue doing it. And eventually after maybe a few months or few years, you will find even an, uh, like better improvised uh, process, much better and bigger. So that's the concept of uh, continuous improvement. And yeah, the next word is Kaizen. In Yeah, it's a Japanese word that means continuous improvement. Kai is continuous, Zen is improvement. The next philosophy is quality as source. So it's always said that, uh, you know, whenever you identify an issue or a quality issue, try to fix it at source rather than just uh, fixing it on the higher level or do some bandage kind of work. Uh, so yeah, just fix it at the source. And uh, yeah, that's the, that is the right approach as for the quality principle, quality rules. And a few obstacles in implementing quality. The very first is, you know, company-wide definition of quality, lack of company. Next next one is a lack of a strategic uh, plan and cha uh, for change. So oftentimes, uh, like companies that face quality issues, these are the main issues they, uh, yeah, they, they go through. So um, the management has to keep these points in their mind. Uh, yeah, every time they are uh, working on the, you know, quality approach or quality management system, or in general, the quality, total quality management approach. Criticism, yeah, uh, like, you know, a few slides ago, we saw that, uh, you know, quality versus quantity. So oftentimes, uh, some members of the team uh, get overzealous about the quality first approach. And uh, 
every any small issue they start you know focusing on how to improve the quality and stopping the uh, process so that leads to low product actual being made or low services are actually being offered so that affects your customer yeah not providing uh, the parts uh, on the time the customer is wanting or the right number of uh, yeah, quantities the customer is wanting so that leads to loss of sale uh, loss of customer goodwill unsatisfied customer and so on so yeah these are the you know yeah that's the reason why uh, tqm or quality approach quality total quality management is uh, sometimes criticized so yeah like uh, overzealous advocacy uh, is real some of the uh, programs that, that may not be linked to the organization in a meaningful way, same thing. Like if you always say quality first, if you see an issue, stop the production, meaning you are not producing anything. So customer dissatisfaction. So that covered, that's covered in the second point. Yeah, few more issues are, yeah, failure to carefully plan the program and sometimes they pursue continuous improvement and yeah, quality efforts are not tied to the end results. So these are some things to keep in mind. And yeah, this is the PD uh, SA uh, cycle we saw, uh, very similar to the PDCA. It's just that, uh, yeah. And again, we'll be talking about this whole cycle again and again. So for now, just remember PDSA is a plan to study act. So initially, whenever there is a problem you're looking for in, in your operation, you plan to understand what the current state is. Then you yeah, go there, actually do uh, evidence hunting, check the facts, and then uh, yeah, design a plan, formulate a plan. Then you go and implement uh, it. That's a do uh, phase. And study is after implementation, make sure it is running well. So collect the data and make sure it's uh, giving the desired result based on what improvement you have planned. And once you know it's working, uh, fully uh, hand it over to the production. So that's your act phase. And while doing so, monitor uh, whether it's, uh, uh, yeah, it, the, it is giving the reliable results or not. And that's your final uh, uh, phase, which is act. So that's your PDSA. And this is your yeah, overall, I'll say the big umbrella, big concept of problem solving. So again, it all requires a, a strong, a higher uh, manage, management commitment from extreme high level. And this is a, a typical cycle. First is like identify the problem. That's your very step one. Then yeah, form the team, define problems and analyze the problem, uh, implement a solution, evaluate the solution, whether it's working or not, make the necessary adjustments. And then uh, once uh, the performance is sustaining, you yeah, hand it over to the production. So overall, this is your procedure. And in the next uh, lecture, I will yeah, I'll show my own example uh, of a very systematic study like this uh, we did. And again, that was a Six Sigma project, one of a major Six Sigma project of my whole career. I will be happy to showcase it to you guys with, with the, some real results. So yeah, this is your problem solving uh, methodology, I'll say in a, in a yeah, systematic step-by-step uh, -step, uh, manner. And again, all this requires a strong management commitment. Then process improvement, very same thing. I think, uh, yeah, this these are like, I think all the concepts here, we are learning the PDSA, PDCA, process improvement, continuous improvement, even the next one, which is coming, that is lean manufacturing and Six Sigma, or I, I see several concepts are overlapping. So your process improvement is a systematic approach, systematic process, where you map the process, meaning understand your current state, analyze the issue, identify the issue, uh, confirm it's an issue, and then come up with a plan. Uh, yeah, once you have the plan, implement the solution, uh, monitor whether it's working or not, make the necessary adjustments, and then verify it, uh, yeah, make sure it is sustaining. And once it is sustaining, completely hand it over to the uh, manufacturing. So that's your process improvement uh, step. Same is the case with Six Sigma, uh, but again, Six Sigma is more statistically inclined. And this word Sigma is nothing but it's a Greek letter, a Sigma. And that's nothing but your variance, yeah? So yeah, like, like you for any given data set, you have an average, you have a, like the average, which is your mean value, then you have a standard deviation and you have a variance, yeah? So yeah, this, uh, yeah. So this is related to, uh, to your uh, yeah, statistical concept. And as per this uh, Six Sigma concept, you. Uh, so if I see my process is six sigma capable, meaning my process only makes uh, 3.4 defects per million item uh, produced. So that's your uh, end goal, and it's a big methodology. I will yeah uh, yeah provide like provide some more uh, like uh, examples of my own work uh, uh, of your how this was achieved in in a very uh, like higher level brief uh, manner in our next class. And yeah, here are some uh, principles. And like I said, I think last time uh, yeah. For any Six Sigma project, these are the main phases uh, it goes through. So D, uh, remember this terminology, DMAIC. 
uh, which is d which uh, yeah uh, which means a, a defined measure analysis improve control so uh, in six sigma project control methodology or maybe i will highly recommend you guys getting used to this terminology any project you run just break it down into this uh, like yeah uh, format which is dmaic so define the problem clearly uh, uh, yeah qualify clearly quantify the problem that you are looking into and try to get as well as information uh, numeric information you can and then uh, after defining measure so use some kind of data analysis or you go there or send your uh, employees uh, yeah uh, responsible employees to that actual process to collect the make some real observation real data collection get the data back analyze it make sure uh, identify the root causes so that's your uh, yeah an analysis phase and once you uh, analyze uh, the right issue then uh, you think of any improvement uh, plans and then you actually implement it so that's your improve phase and after implementing uh, make sure it's the results are sustaining so that's your control phase yeah so yeah that's the dmaic again it's it sounds very so small simple but very important tool and within these there are numerous tools i will yeah I, i'll just uh, show you uh, in in the next uh, lecture what what those tools are and uh, with respect to quality these are your uh, very powerful very strong simple sounding but very powerful very strong tools uh, usually used in the yeah basic quality tools first one is your flow chart we have, well we have talked a lot about the process flow uh, maps or yeah so that's indirectly that's uh, it's also called as a flow chart uh, then there is a checklist then there is a histogram pareto charts and so on so the next uh, slide shows uh, yeah a few as uh, i'll say schematics of those so the first one is your flow chart so yeah depending upon the shape uh, the type of process uh, yeah you you have listed shape so again this is an operation this is a decision point then operation decision point so maybe this is an operation and this is your quality check uh, then you make a decision whether uh, if the part passes the quality it goes to the next one if it doesn't it gets reworked and then again there is a check then it passes go to the next operation then again quality check either scrap or pass uh, similarly there is a checklist uh, again very common uh, tool then again uh, you use uh, based on the data you collected you yeah either derived uh, developed histograms or you come up with a pareto chart again this is a typical example of a pareto chart uh yeah i will show you some pareto chart as well and again this is a scatter diagram uh, i tried to uh, and again they, they tried to identify the trends using the scatter diagram and uh, again uh, you are looking for clusters you are looking for groups you are looking for trends same is the case with a control chart over here so again this is upper control limit uh, lower control limit and this is your nominal line and again looking at these all points looks like all the process is in control because all the collected data points or the dimensions characteristics measures are within the year control limits if it goes above or below then it's a scrap then your process is out of control and this is a typical example of a, a cause and effect diagram or an Ishi ishikawa diagram or also called as fishbone diagram moving forward uh, methods of generating ideas uh, in any co company so you have you hold brainstorming sessions or you uh, yeah like uh, systematically hold these quality uh, circle teams so maybe on a weekly basis monthly basis you come up with all those uh, quality issues quality ideas how to improve you list them down systematically in an excel sheet you document them and you prioritize based on uh, the ideas which are formed and again benchmarking is another very important uh, tool so if you don't know where your process stands or how you are performing or whatever the efficiency or productivity of your process or department is uh, if you don't know how, like where you stand whether it is good or bad you do a comparison based on your competitors or yeah similar uh, processes uh, guys you use similar processes so you collect information either formally call them or get it from internet and compare where your process stands and again there are advantages of benchmarking as well so we'll be learning about it in, in our next uh, lecture so here are some more details about quality circles uh, benchmarking as well as uh, yeah the uh, brainstorm uh, sorry benchmarking and finally uh, here is a, our last slide so with respect to operation strategy how you will uh, integrate quality so uh, just remember it's a strategic imperative uh, for all the organizations it's a must uh, it's never ending journey and uh, oops i see an issue over here customer satisfaction oh yeah that's that's true sorry yeah customer satisfaction is not equal to um, customer loyalty hey i see an issue i think it's it's equal to customer loyalty uh, yeah maybe in a bug i will fix this yeah so satisfied customer equals to loyal customer 
And finally, uh, yeah, quality needs should be incorporated throughout the entire supply chain and not just the organization itself. So yeah, just, just make sure all your suppliers are involved. And these days I will say, uh, yeah, companies are global. Each company has multiple facilities within United States, multiple places or uh, in, in different countries as well. So that's the reason why uh, this quality control is becoming complex and more complex mean more opportunities for improvement. So that's here, I will say opportunity point. So with that said, uh, yeah, hey, one more guys. Uh, yeah, so here are some extra YouTube links that I've copy pasted. Only if you get some time, um, um, yeah, you watch it. I think these are this will be another like a good learning experience for all of you guys. So with that, I'd like to end the lecture for today. Thank you all. Uh, have a very nice day.